Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's edition of English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. In today's edition of English Digest, we're going to talk about motorcycles. Yeah, motorcycles、mm -hmm. or motorbikes. If you're in England,、yeah. uh, these, of course, are two-wheeled vehicles with motors in between the wheels, and you can ride on the winding mountain roads and have yourself a great time. Listen to Steppenwolf singing "Born to Be Wild," <laughs> but of course. I did want to mention that there is a difference between a motorcycle and a scooter. Yep. And a scooter, of course, is a kind of motorbike that you can place your feet inside of、mm -hmm. uh, to keep them out of the rain. But a motorcycle, you need to sit on it like you're sitting on a horse. And so we're talking actually about motorcycles today. Motorcycles are more popular in Western countries, and they're not used so much for practical transportation like they are here in Taiwan. Motorcycles are mostly recreational vehicles, although there are people who certainly ride their motorcycles to work and school and stuff like that. But my goodness, you just don't see motorcycles in the United States like you see here in Taiwan.、Uh, everybody uses scooters here to get around, to get to school, to get to work, but Uh, motorcycles are usually very big. You very seldom see anything lower than 800 cc's in the United States. So there's a big culture about motorcycles, and that's why the title of today's lesson is "Rise of the Machines, Season Two: Motorcycle Magic." Yeah, this isn't a show that I would necessarily watch on my own, but we'll be talking about motorcycles and、uh, some of these people that are in the show.、Um, I frankly think motorcycles are dangerous.、Uh, scooters can be dangerous too, but the motorcycles have bigger engines, so the faster you go, the more you're going to be hurt when you have a crash. So let's get started, guys. We're talking about the rise of the machines, season two. Uh, we're going to read through the article and then we'll be back. The motorcycle riders effortlessly lean into the mountain road's curves, controlling their superbike's speed and weight. As a rest area comes into view, the riders slow down, eager to chat about the ride with their friends. Before hitting the road again. They inspect one another's bikes, discussing their speeds, ergonomics, and exterior designs. However, few of these riders know what actually goes on inside their bikes. Luckily for them, Discovery Channel's Rise of the Machines Season Two goes deep inside the superbike's powerful engines, bringing their inner secrets to light. Rise of the Machines Season Two follows Matteo Baiocco. An Italian superbike racer and three-time national champion, as he prepares for Italy's Misano World Circuit. In the days leading up to the race, Matteo tests the track so he knows exactly what his Aprilia bike will need on race day. As Matteo's experienced team of engineers and mechanics retool the bike to make sure it performs at its best, the show delves into the history of motorcycles. And how they've evolved into the big beasts they are today. The first motorcycles, which appeared in the 1860s, were hardly more than bicycles fitted with dangerous steam-powered engines. The first gas-powered motorcycle, Germany's Daimler Reitwagen, hit the scene in 1885. Its inventor, Gottlieb Daimler, is often called the father of the motorcycle. A decade later. The world's first motorcycle companies, including Harley Davidson, started forming, and many of them are still popular today. Japanese motorcycle manufacturers largely cornered the market after World War II, but they only became known for their superbikes in the 1980s, when people were becoming interested in motorcycle racing. As the desire for superbikes grew, manufacturers started developing them to meet demand. Nowadays, Japan's Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, and Kawasaki bikes, as well as Italy's Ducati and Aprilia bikes, top the list of the world's fastest superbikes. Okay, guys, we're going to talk about those motorcycles. You know, Tom, sometimes we have. 
topics and units that are focused more on maybe things that girls are interested in.、Uh, this is definitely something that a lot of guys will like. Motorcycles.、Um, motorcycles are kind of hard to ride、uh, for women, and unless you're pretty big, you know, because they weigh so much.、Uh, but it's motorcycle magic we're focusing on. The motorcycle riders effortless, effortlessly—that is so hard to say—effortlessly, which means they do it without exerting a lot of effort or using a lot of muscle or power.、Uh, they lean. If you lean, you kind of go in one direction or another.、Um, my mom used to get mad at us when we were young because we would, especially my brother, he would sit in his chair at, at the dining room table and would lean. Back in it, which hurt the legs on the chair, and she'd always get mad at him. So if you lean, you kind of move back. You can move to the right or left or to、uh, to the back. You can lean lots of different directions. But they they lean. If you've watched motorcycle riders, they lean when they're turning a corner. They go in that direction.、Um, it always looks scary to me because I think if they lean too far, they get a fall over. Uh, indeed, and、Maybe. if you're on the motorcycle, or if you're the passenger, you might think the motorcycle is going to fall over.、Mm-hmm. But again, this is kind of a, a scene they're probably showing in this TV show. We've got the riders on the highway, heading out on the highway, and they're leaning into the curves without effort, effortlessly, and they're controlling their super bike's speed and weight. So here's super bike, which means a very large motorcycle.、Mm-hmm. I should say that、uh, in Western countries, you don't often see small. Smaller motorcycles, so there's really no need for a special word for motorcycles. Jongxing、uh, motorcycle or something like that that they say here in Taiwan,、ah. but we just say motorcycles because everything, at least in the United States, is a big motorcycle. So there's no reason to say that. But、uh, in this particular case, these are really special mi-、uh, motorcycles. So we're calling them super bikes. Super、mm. bikes, big special kinds of motorcycles, maybe 1,200 cc or something like that. And as a rest area comes into view, the riders slow down, eager to chat about the Ride with their friends.、Mm. Okay, so you're going to a rest area, which you'll see on、uh, freeways here in Taiwan. There、uh-huh. are various rest areas as you drive down south or up north, whatever way you're going.、Uh, in the United States, of course, if you're riding or driving on interstate highways, every what maybe 50 miles or so, there is a rest area where you can pull in and take a rest. They usually don't have any facilities here in Taiwan. The rest areas have facilities. I mean, like stores that sell food. And stuff. The ones in the states, it's just a place to go to the bathroom or something like that,、mm-hmm. or park for a while and rest. They don't usually have restaurants like they do here in Taiwan.、Mm. But uh, in any case, uh, it comes into view. That means、uh, it's starting to appear in the distance as you're traveling toward it. It comes into view. That's right. So、uh, that's a nice place to stop for a while. Yeah, if something comes into view, you can just see it, right? So the riders slow down, eager to chat with each other about the ride with their friends. The next sentence is before hitting the road. When you hit the road, it just means you get on the road. You start、uh, driving on the road or riding on the road, depending on what your Form of transportation is. We'll also talk about hitting the books, which means you go and do your homework. You know, you go and open up those textbooks and do、uh, your homework that you've been assigned. You can also hit the slopes if you're a ski sli- a skier, and you go snow skiing. You go hit the slopes. It just means you begin doing that sort of activity.、Um, yeah, but hit the books is kind of popular for students to say. I'm gonna, I gotta hit the books. Yep, hit the books. Uh, mm. Hit the road in this particular case. Hit the sack means going、yeah. to bed. There you go. That's a slang term. Hit the sack. It's time to hit the hay,、uh, as my father used to say, which is the same sort of thing. Some、uh-huh. people used to sleep on hay,、right. but again, they're all gathered at a rest area, and these are a bunch of friends. They're probably part of a motorcycle group or something like that, maybe、uh-huh. a club, and they're looking at each.
each other's bikes.、Uh, we use the word bike、uh, to talk about motorcycles. And I think here in Taiwan, there are probably various places where people stop and gather. I think it's—is it called the Monet Cafe or something out on Highway Six,、uh, out near Pingxi,、uh, where you know motorcyclists stop and have some coffee and talk、cool. to their friends and stuff like that, and inspect each other's bikes.、Mm. And when they do that, they're discussing their speeds, which could be how fast they could go. It could also be referring to their gears. Also, the ergonomics.、Uh, ergonomics kind of refers to how the motorcycle performs, how practical it is, but、mm. also. In terms of how it fits to the body, how its com- shape, yeah, its shape, and、mm. does it go along with your body pretty well? Ergonomics. We talk about ergonomics with, say, digital cameras. Do they fit your hands really well? Are they easy to use? Are they practical? And they're also talking about the exterior designs.、Uh, exterior just means the outside of something. What it looks like on the outside. Does it have some nice looking chrome fenders or some saddle bags and stuff like that? Yeah. What does it look like on the outside? Is it cool looking? And of course, the opposite is interior. Yeah,、uh, you might be interested in becoming an interior designer. That's somebody who takes care of uh, choosing a uh, wall covering.、Uh, used to be wallpaper. Now it's wall coverings. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. Floor coverings would be carpet, which we grew up with carpeting,、oh, yeah. or wood floors, which are really popular. So exterior, interior.、Um, it can be either an adjective or a noun. So, however, it says few of these writers know what actually goes on inside their bikes, which means if their bikes break down, they're not. Really sure how to fix them, or you know how to take a look at the engine or the motor, what's going on. However, this is a problem. So luckily for them, we've got Discovery Channel's a show called. Rise of the Machines Season Two. It goes deep inside the superbike's powerful engines. Oh, that's good. So you could learn some stuff while you're watching this on TV. And what they hope to do is bring their inner secrets to light. If you bring something to light, it means you take something that was unfamiliar to people or unknown, and you kind of.、Uh, You know, highlight it, talk about it, so it's not a mystery anymore. To bring something to light, so your inner secrets to light. That's kind of nice.、Uh- It's、uh, fun to watch TV and not just be entertained, but learn something too. Yeah, we can learn about the science of how these motorcycles work, how the engines work,、uh, what kind of way do they convert the fuel uh-huh. Uh-huh.、Uh, so they can be,、uh, you know, burned in the combustion chamber and drive the pistons and stuff like that. We can learn all those things when we watch this show. Okay, that、uh, brings us to about the midway point of our explanation. Let's take a break now, but please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. 今天我们要看的是第十五单元。好，嗯，其实我们要谈的是一个 Discovery 频道上的新节目。那这个节目已经做到 Season Two， 这个 S Two 就是 Season Two， 已经做到第二季了。它是 Rise of the Machines， 谈机器大晋级。那现在要谈的这个机器是。超级摩托车，好，我们来看看文章。他说到，嗯，这个场景当然就是，哎，先从这个摩托车骑士，然后再往山路的这个转弯倾斜，然后这个呃，整个的过程里面。当然，哎，看起来哇哦，很刺激。可是重点是，他们对于车子这个所谓的摩托车，他们了不了解呢？哎。可能不见得哦。这边有一句话，他说 ：“Few of these riders know what actually goes on inside their bikes。”我们注意到结构上，第一点就是这个 “few”。其实 “few” 要记得它跟 “a few” 不太一样 ，“few” 表示几乎没有。换句话说，它是很否定的含义哦，就是没几个，没什么人会知道的。这里头的这些骑士们呐、啊，其实没几个知道，或者是他们可能没什么人知道。知道 what actually goes on， what 这个字，其实在英文里面。当然，我们常见也常用。如果仔细探讨它的结构上呢，它是一种呃所谓的复合冠带。它引导出来的这个子句，在这里是当做 no 它的受词。到底这个摩托车的内部是怎样一回事？他们知道吗？可能不清楚。那所以说，会有这个节目里头就会深入的探讨。
然后让大家知道。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're talking about Rise of the Machine season two. It's a program on the Discovery Channel. We're talking about how motorcycles are magic, hoo hoo hoo, or motorcycle magic. I know that people who love motorcycles love them. My brother always wanted to get one, but that was the one time my mom really put her foot down. If you put your foot down, you insist on something, and you say, "No, this is the limit. This is what I'm not going to." Let you do. She wouldn't let him get a motorcycle because they are extremely dangerous. And he was a high school kid at the time.、Um, they did let him buy a jeep,、uh, which he then got into an accident in. So my parents were right not to let him have a motorcycle. I'm sure he would have、uh, hurt himself if not killed himself.、Uh, you got to be really careful with these、uh, pieces of machinery. They are very powerful. Ah,、uh, motorcycles are the most dangerous vehicles in the world. They're even more dangerous than riding in airplanes,、uh, as are cars as well. But in any case, here,、uh, Rise of the Machines season two follows a fella, an Italian guy, a handsome macho kind of guy by the name of Matteo Bayoko. He's an Italian. Italian superbike racer and three-time national champion, and again the show follows him as he prepares for Italy's Misano World Circuit. A circuit usually refers to、uh, something that goes around in a circle, a circuit, but it could also refer to a series of things, a series of activities.、Uh, the circuit, which、uh, you know the participants or the athletes take part in,、yeah. various races in different parts of the world throughout. The year. Well, they'll often use circuit to talk about a series of contests or competitions.、Um, if、uh, someone's really good at tennis, they'll be on the tennis circuit, which means they participate in the competitions or the、uh, tennis championships that they have. So he's on the Misano World Circuit.、Uh, so in the days leading up to the race, Matteo tests the track. So he knows exactly what his bike. It's called an Aprilia. Aprilia is probably what it's called. Aprilia bike will need on race day. He's a real risk taker, I'm sure. When you talk about this phrase, leading up to something, it means the time that precedes an event or comes before an event. Leading up to Chinese New Year,、um, I really enjoy the excitement of the people here in Taiwan.、Uh, everyone's really excited for Chinese New Year to come because they can. Relax and eat a lot of food and sleep, which I know they love to do. Certainly, okay. So he's preparing for this race. He tests the track, so he knows exactly what his Aprilia bike will do. As Matteo's experienced team of engineers and mechanics retool the bike to make sure it performs at its best. The show delves into the history of motorcycles and how they've evolved into the big beasts、mm. they are today. So, as or while these engineers are working on his bike, the show goes ahead and does something else.、Cool. It shows us、uh, the history of motorcycles. So, first of all, we've got the team of engineers and these mechanics. A mechanic usually is a person who works on some kind of vehicle, like an automobile, a car, an auto mechanic,、right. the person who. Who fixes your fixes your car, and they are retooling the bike, which means they're basically making、uh, adjustments to it so it can perform better.、Uh, it doesn't mean they're actually repairing it; they're actually making modifications so that it performs at its best. They look at the track, and okay, these are the conditions of the track, maybe the weather conditions, and then we're going to make some changes to the bike accordingly. That's right. So they retool the bike to make sure it performs at its best, and then it says here the show delves into the history of motorcycles and how they've evolved. If you delve into something, you kind of.、Uh 
the literal version it means to reach inside something and maybe pull something out. You can delve into your pocket, but here it's、uh, figurative. It just means to research into something or take a look into something, examine something more closely. Here they're examining the history of motorcycles and how they've evolved. If something evolves, it changes slowly over time, and、uh, motorcycles have gotten more and more powerful, more and more exciting. Um, I know that uh, uh, it's something that's kind of fun to look at. I know I, I really love the Harley Davidson Davidson motorcycles; those are pretty cool to look at.、Uh, but they、uh, they take a look at the history behind the motorcycles, and that's fun. You can learn how they've become the big beasts. They are today. A beast is kind of like a monster, so they're really powerful. They are big, and the first motorcycles, which appeared in the 1860s,、wow. were hardly more than bicycles fitted with dangerous steam-powered engines. <laughs> steam-powered, which mean which would mean the、uh, let's see the external combustion engine.、Uh-huh. So that would be very very dangerous. But I guess they were experimenting at that time. I didn't know there were those kinds of、uh, devices around the time of the American Civil War. Or, I but, didn't either.、Yeah. But in any case,、uh, we've got a gas-powered motorcycle, which means gasoline.、Mm-hmm. The first gas-powered motorcycle, Germany's Daimler Weitwagen. I hope、mm. I said that right. Hit the scene in 1885, and its inventor Gottlieb Daimler is often called the father of the motorcycle.、Mm-hmm. So yes,、uh, for all the motorcycles on Taiwan's streets and highways, we have Gottlieb Daimler to thank. Oh, cool! Yeah, so、uh, Daimler's pretty famous if you're into the history of cars and motorcycles. I didn't know he was the father of the motorcycle. That's kind of cool. A decade later, or ten years later, the world's first motorcycle companies, including the famous Harley Davidson, which is American, started forming. So. I didn't know Harley Davidson was that old either. It's an old company. Yeah, yeah. So, 1895, they started forming or organizing, and many of these companies are still popular today. Japanese motorcycle manufacturers largely cornered the market after World War II. Oh, I didn't know that. So, if you are a manufacturer, guys, you're someone who produces products. Usually, or typically, they are produced in a huge factory with big pieces of machinery.、Um, if you corner the market on something, it means you have、uh, the market share of some product. So, most people are buying your product. You could say when smartphones first came out, Apple had cornered the market on cell phones. But you know what? Samsung has caught up and passed them now. Oh, they have.、Yep. Okay. Well, every time I kind of check this、uh, when I'm out in public, it seems like、uh, the majority of people here in Taiwan use iPhones. But I could be wrong. We're about talking、that. about worldwide. Worldwide.、Yeah. Okay. So they I guess they, them. I guess they、mm-hmm. like、uh, Apple phones here in Taiwan somewhat. But in any case, uh, uh, Daimler, of course, is the father. And then we've got Harley Davidson mentioned here. Of course, Harley Davidson are more macho kind of show bikes, and you don't see them in races so much. And so we've got all these、uh, Japanese motorcycle manufacturers. They cornered the market after World War II, and there was that one, that 90cc motorcycle that came out in the 60s or something like that. And they had an advertising campaign, and、uh, that sort of brought motorcycles into the mainstream. I wish、uh-huh. I could remember the model of that、uh, motorcycle, but it was fairly small, only 90cc or something like that. But in any case, here、uh, people were becoming interested in motorcycle racing、mm. in the 1980s, and as As the desire for superbikes grew, manufacturers started developing them to meet demand. Of course, if you've studied economics, you know about the law of supply and demand.、Yeah. Demand is when people want something, so people wanted motorcycles, and they started building more and more to meet demand. And nowadays, we've got these different Japanese motorcycle companies: Honda. Suzuki, Yamaha, and Kawasaki, and then in Italy we've got Ducati and Aprilia, and also don't forget BMW motorcycles. These all top the list of the world's fastest superbikes. Wow, I haven't heard of the two Italian brands, but we've all heard of the Japanese brands and Harley Davidson. Right now, guys, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to wrap up. 
。好，我们就来看这个节目内容。这里有一位主角，这位主角是意大利籍的，他是一个超级摩托车赛车手，而且他曾经得过三次全国冠军。好，那现在呢，场景就是在意大利的米萨诺。国际赛道上，好，我们先看到这边呢。他说到，嗯，之前的一些准备工作。那我们晓得，呃，其实就赛车手来说呢，他们的状态很重要。那他背后的这个团队。一定十分的重要。那这边就给大家几个，哎，当时这节目里头发生的事情。他说到啊、哦，他们当然要测一测 test track。要是测试那个赛道，才了解说当天会不会有什么哎，他的机车需要去呃注意的地方，让他能保持在最佳的状态。好，那这里又注意到刚刚才提的 what 又来了一次 ，knows exactly what his。A Prelia bike will need on race day. 当然，同样的道理，跟前面的结构还是一样。What 还是当复合冠带。好，我们再来看下面就说到了这个团队哦，他们当然最重要是要让这个赛车手，哎，当天能表现到最好。那节目里头呢，就会深入去探索摩托车的历史，还有怎么样它逐渐发展成今天这样的重量级怪兽。我们注意到这个动词哦 ，evolved into， 我们知道 evolve。跟演化有关，常常我们在谈动物、生物的演化，用到 evolve。当然，你也可以拿这个动词来谈事情的演变。那以这个地方来说，就是演化、演化、演变成为今天像这样的 big beast 重量级野兽。好，那这个当然是对摩托车这种超级摩托车的一种赞叹啊。再来，下面我们就来看看，哎，就历史来看，其实啊，第一。P 出现的年代， 1 8 6 0年的时候，你说它到底像什么样子？哦，它原来是 gas， 它它不是 gas powered 哦，它是 steam powered。那再来一样的道理，后面就说到当时是这样。那第一个 gas powered motorcycle， 也就是说，真的用汽油第一批汽油动力摩托车，那是在什么时候呢？那是后来1885年。第一批的这个汽车汽汽油的动力摩托车，哎，当时呢，其实我们想不到说到今天呢、啊，完全不同了。因为我们知道，今天其实日本他们的摩托车在第二次世界大战之后，可以说是垄断了摩托车的市场。那看到了这个片语吗 ？Corner the market， 这就是垄断市场。啊，那我们看到了，今天其实好多家的摩托车的车厂，包括像本田、像铃木、像山叶、像台骑摩托车，可能大家都是耳熟能详的。OK， 我们今天的讲解就到这边结束，我们下次见。OK， everybody， that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. But please join us again next time when we continue to talk about Motorcycles on this program, Rise of the Machines, Season Two. Until then, from all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.